Tom. I'm Tom. Uh, I'm actually Tom Jackson. And that's my last name. Yeah, yeah that's the way it works. Uh, I found out I'm, I'm uh, my sister told me yesterday, I'm Scottish and German. Mostly, yeah. So if I get pissed off, just chill out, OK? But if you want to drink a beer, I'm good. <laughs> so, uh, so here's, uh, tell me who you are. Uh, how many of you are musicians? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, how many of you are um, singer-songwriters specifically? OK, all right. How many of you actually play with the band once in a while? OK, I just want to announce that tomorrow I'm doing a class. This class, I love this class, but it's an hour. And for me, an hour is barely enough time to say hi. Uh, tomorrow I'm putting a band on stage. And we have two hours. And I promise you, uh, by the grace of God, you will learn a whole bunch, not only as um, soloist, but as, as no, as, as soloist, even if you don't play in a band. Because I cannot cram, I got about 30, I think I figured out 33 hours of material. I can't cram it into an hour. So I, I can try and get a little more in tomorrow. So how many of you are out playing a lot of shows right now? Weekend Warriors, all right. How many of you, um, you know, I, I travel, by the grace of God, I travel the world. And I talk to so many musicians. Uh, maybe Martin or me or somebody might speak to more artists than anybody in the world, because we go do all these conferences all the place. And that's not like, it's just simply, after a while, after doing this for own years, um, <laughs> you start figuring out what people, there's nothing new under the sun. You ever heard that saying? There's nothing new under the sun. So those of you who have day gigs, you know this. The problems you have are the problems you have. There's not really like really unique problems very often. You know, it's not like aliens invade. Uh, so, so I see people all over the world that have these four reasons they want to do this thing. First thing is music. Who in this room loves music? A little rhetorical. All right. You love music more than the normal person. Am I right? Which makes you not. You got it. Uh, now you got it, you know it. And that's why it's a beautiful thing to be together, because we can all be weird together. Uh, second reason, particularly songwriters, you do this for another reason, which is sometimes the message. You have something to say to the planet that you feel like, what, a couple things. You, you, you're the only one, sometimes you, you guys know this, when you isolate yourself, you feel like you're the only one going through stuff. And then you come to something else, and you realize, oh my gosh, when someone else says, no, I'm just like that, you go, oh, thank you. <laughs> no, really, there's a release, isn't there? Yeah. So you want to connect with people, with your songs, whether it's change the planet the way you look at life, whether it's you know, you're going through something, and someone goes, I relate to you, or that kind of thing. So the second reason you do this, and not just you. I probably spoke to a quarter of a million artists. Um, and this is the reason they do it. The third reason is money. Who would like some money doing this? Yeah. In fact, who would like to, who would like to make a living doing this? All right. Has anyone seen, uh, I mean, you've got to, unless you've got your head, you're, unless you're an ostrich and sticking your head in the ground. Do you realize how much money comes from your live show? Listen, I, I'm sure you can make money from Spotify and from YouTube and from this and from that and from this and from that. But I just saw a thing just yesterday that said, for most artists, 88% of their money comes from live show. Do you realize, ironically, it's the last thing you pay attention to? Do you realize that? Yeah, I got this thing that I need to invest in, but I'll invest in doing everything else but what makes me money. That's smart. <laughs> no. That's why I'm here. My, my, with all my heart. I, in fact, I'm driving in last night. We had a little pre-party, and it was kind of cool. And the lights were on at the stadium over there. Um, and Taylor's setting up. Taylor Swift. You heard of her? She's, she's setting up her uh, thing. And I thought, I, I, I worked with Taylor on three of her tours. I put her show together for three tours. And, and 
without getting into details, because I have a non-disclosure. Um, no, she's a sweetheart, and I loved working with her, because she was, she was like, let's try it, let's try it, let's try it. But there were some issues, you know, you get into that, you know, that world, and it becomes interesting. Anyways, I'm driving down, I see the lights on, and there's a part of me went, oh, I want to be there. Oh, but I can't because I'm teaching at CD Baby. And I thought, oh, no, wait. And I really went to my heart and I said, where would I rather be? Uh, I don't want to sound goofy or weird, and I've had a glass of wine. <laughs> but I'd rather be here. Really. I'd rather be here. I'd rather be, because I've done that, been there, done that, and boy, is the pressure intense, and, and you know, it's like, ee. Um, and really, you, this may sound bizarre, but you can affect more people than she does, collectively. You can make a difference in their lives. And so I'd rather be here. Um, and I want to help you to make money. I do, I do. In fact, I've had today, just as I got my headphones on, I get prepared, I kind of get myself psyched. I've had two people come up and poke me in the arm and say, one guy bought me the wine as I'm sitting down there. He goes, here, this is for you. I'm like, why? He goes, he goes, I bought your book last year. I bought your DVDs. I implemented it, and I am making a living doing this. And yeah, no. You have no idea how much that brings joy to my heart, because that's why I'm here. I just want you to know that. Of course, I make a living doing this, but not just this. The main thing I really do is work with artists on their show. Um, but the third thing is money. The third thing you guys do, this is for money. And the last reason you do this is for what I call me. So it's music, message, money, and me. Pretty clever, huh? Yeah. Uh, Tony Robbins got a little bit of me, you know. <laughs> but I also got a little Ozzy, so, so figure that out. Uh, me meaning, you guys, I, I have, uh, listen, I'm a, I'm a spiritual guy. I, I believe you're created to do this. If you're a musician, you, this is your vocation. This isn't the way, you, uh, for those of you who want to be rich and famous and that's why you're doing it, just go out and have a drink, get some ice cream, bring me some too. Um, but for those of you who love music and you feel like yeah, I've got to do this thing, that's why we do it. And if you can do those four things, make, um, make money, fulfill your calling is what I call it, get your message across, and just bathe in the music. That's why we do it. Do I hear an amen? Yep. We're going to have a little church today. Uh-huh. Um, well, <laughs> with every head bow. Uh, uh, don't get me started. So, no, I'll get started. <laughs> so, I have a, listen, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. Like I said, I, I, I've done this for, really, I've done this so long. And, that, and, and even, a, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. Is the, it's a saying I learned here in the South since I moved here. It's like, you ain't the sharpest tool in the shed, is he? No, no, I'm not. But I'll tell you this, I'm a little bit sharper than a rock. And after so many years of doing this with literally two, three, four hundred artists, a rock could start figuring stuff out. So I put together a system, a method that works. Now, some of you, when I talk about method, and this is what, you know, it's like, I don't want to be stuck in the method, man. I'm an artist. It would be spontaneous, man. <laughs> well, let me say this, and I'm going to say this quite a bit this week. Spontaneity and winging it are two different things. Two different things. So I've come up with this method that works. It works. I, I, I really, just twice today, people say, oh, I, my merch just went through the roof. This is happening. I, one guy, where are you at, said, I got an edge on my audience, on any other artist that walks in. When I walk into a place and I'm doing, there's three or four artists, I know I have an edge because I've worked on this stuff. And I'm not, I, listen, uh, you know, the other day, uh, we're, it's a process. Let me just put it this way. It's a process. This is not something that just, you, you're gonna hear me speak once. Some of you will do this, and you're stupid. Uh, you will say, okay, I got it now. Uh, first of all, that's flattering, because wow, they really got it. But the truth is, it's insulting, because I've spent years working on this. 
I spent well over 25 years just doing this. I can't figure out how to use my phone. I don't know how to do YouTube. I don't know, in other words, I can't do any of that other stuff. I am so lame, it's ridiculous. When it comes to this, it, wor it works, and I know it works, but you gotta understand it, and it's gotta become a part of you. And if 88% of your revenue comes from this, this is what you need to learn, folks. So, I have a method, and the method does not box you in, but we have limitations. Look at this, there's a stage. The stage is only so big, I'm limited. Goethe says, working within limits, mastery reveals itself. Can I say Stevie Wonder? Some of you are really young going, who? <laughs> if you know Stevie Wonder, give me a yeah. Ah, all right. He writes a song, and us musicians are like, oh my gosh, what's he doing? This is awesome. What is it? And then, and then the general public, who doesn't understand any music things, singing along with it. It's genius. Sting is another one. So, um, but mastery uh, reveals itself within limits. So there are limits, but this method works. The woman I was just talking about earlier in the stadium, I spent four days or five days, I don't remember after all, the first time, and her merchandise went up. You're not going to believe this. I didn't believe it, but they told me. 600%. Yeah. 600%. And they were paying me by the day. And I should have got one point on the merchandise. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, uh huh. Um, the manager, it wasn't Rick, Rick was right after Rick. He high-fived me, walked out, and said, thanks for a lot. And I'm like, come back, come back. Let's renegotiate. Uh, but for those of you playing house concerts, um, we have heard, I'll t talk to you. Where's, where's Amy? I have an associate right here. Here's, here's my associate, Amy Walter. We say hi to Amy. Stand up, Amy. <laughs> Amy's been working with me for 12 years. Um, God bless you. And um, we constantly hear people say, oh, I do house concerts or I do coffee houses. And I sell three, four, eight on a good night, 12. And then we get these emails that's like, I sold 45 CDs. People still buy CDs. They do, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I buy a CD, put it in my iPhone, um, uh, my, <laughs> put, it, put it in my, yeah, stick it in. It's really hard to get into that thing. That's the problem. I told you I'm not good with technology. Um, but constantly we're hearing, 30, we sold 30, we sold 45, we sold 55. How many people were there? 60. You're like, yeah, huh? So they're walking away with $1,200 for the night at the end of the day. Who could use that at night? Yeah, hello. But um, anyways, so this is the method, simply. Uh, simply. Uh, it's like building a house. For those of you who have my book or DVDs, you better answer this right. I'm going to kick your butts. What's, if you're building a house, what's the first thing you need? Plan. Yes! I love that man. A plan. Everyone goes, foundation. No! Not a foundation. You need a plan. You don't, you don't wait till the builders show up and go, hey, honey, where do you want to put the house? No, you need an architect. You need vision. You need a plan. You need psych There's so much psychology that goes into a show. But here's what we do. We walk out, we write songs, we walk out on stage. Or no, 20 minutes before, we write a few things on a piece of paper that says our set list. Put a little T where we're going to talk, because somebody's changing their guitar. And then, and then we go out and we wing it, and we hope something good's going to happen. No. Why do you think the milk is at the back of a, rest, uh, of a grocery store? Anybody have it? Yell it out. Everybody That's exactly right. The bread, the milk, the things. So you go through, and then you're walking by, you go, oh, I do like chocolate. <laughs> oh, uh, you know. There's psychology to this. There's a plan. Vision. What I wanted to do with a lot of you is reinvigorate your vision. You had a vision when you started this. You really did. 
you're like, yes. And it wasn't just fame and fortune, though it's a nice thing. Uh, actually, well, we'll get into that. Um, I mean, that can be a burden, too, to be honest with you. But you had a vision. You wanted to affect people. You wanted to do this, and you played the song. How many of you, you're sitting down, whether it's a piano, wherever it is, and you're playing the song, and magic happens just by yourself. And you're like, whoa. And you start getting a vision how the audience is going to respond. You go, oh, my gosh, this is going to kill. The, the audience is going to, uh, you know, they're going to get this feeling. I want them to get this feeling uh, that I wrote, whether it's happy, whether it's sad, whether, whatever it is. That's the vision. And that vision, you need to get that back. And each song has those moments that people go for. And you need to work your show so those moments happen. But because people come to experience moments, they don't come to hear music. They think they do. But if you could, all you came in and right next to you was a little thing that you put on your arm, and I could hit the happy button. You go, oh, yeah, this is fun, this is great. And I could hit the sad button. You go, oh, yeah, my dad, my dad. <laughs> then you hit the, I won't go to that one. Uh, but the point is, you would you'd come back. It's like, I like what this guy does at his show. Well, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to communicate these emotions that, that move us, that mean something to us, to the audience. And the reason you're not making a living is because you're missing out on making the connection. People ask me all the time, so what do you do? I say, you know, people call me a performance coach. People call me, you know, a stage coach. And I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Our job, Amy and my job, is to create moments. And here's, here's where you're, here, here it is. Here's where, you're, here's where you can make a living. You create moments in a show, and, you're, and your merchandise will fly off the table. The songs that that young lady I was talking about earlier, um, where her merch went up 600%, we used the exact same songs she did. I got her halfway through uh, an opening act tour, and we took those songs and created moments out of it instead of playing songs. We created moments. And then here's what happens. People run back to the table and say, now here's what you're going to hear. Where's that song? I really like that song about, you know, Mount Everest. That's a little trippy. Uh, but really what they're saying is this. Where's that song that made me feel that way because I want to feel that way again? But if you never create those moments that make people feel, you won't sell your CDs. Now, some of you, or most of you, have had those moments where it is that emotional connection with the audience. The problem is this. It's random. You have no freaking idea why it happened. None. This is going to sound arrogant, but in all humility, I know why it happens. And I can help you do it. And be, understand this, too. They just don't want one moment. If I asked anyone in this room to play a song, particularly those of you who are a little older and have done this for you, you've got your, your go-to song. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, this is going to kill. Yeah, but what about the other ten in the night? And you do realize to make a living, you have to play more than one song. Yeah. Yeah. So... Okay, my ADD's kicking in. <laughs> I just completely forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> was that the show? Yeah, that was it. Um, so the first thing is a plan. There's a psychology to do this. Understanding your audience. We're going to talk about that. Second thing is the foundation. The foundation are the things that we go through mentally, emotionally, psychologically, even spiritually while we're on stage. And what's happening in the room? It's almost like sometimes, what is that saying about the elephant, the, the elephant in the room that no one speaks about? You ever seen somebody on stage, for example, who's up there on stage, they're playing, they're pretty good, but they're so stinking nervous, you start praying for them. 
No, really, it's like, oh, God, help this person get it together. Because you didn't come to the gig to get nervous. <laughs> hey, let's go out tonight and, and, and get into... Uh, So we'll talk about the foundation a bit more, a lot more tomorrow, actually. That, that'll free a lot of you guys up. The third thing is what I call materials, tools, and skill. So after we've laid the foundation, we have to build the house. And what we have to do, we, we have to have the materials to do it, the tools to do it, and the skill to do it. And here's a dilemma, and this is really rough for a singer-songwriter thing. It's just you on stage often. So how do you make that interesting? But materials, tools, and skill, there are things that we can do up on this stage to keep your show interesting, visually. And I don't mean sliding across the stage on your knee playing, you know, Sweet Baby James. <laughs> it's a little out of context. But there are things we can do up here to make your show interesting. Understand this, like a movie. A band, I, I, and this is a broad stroke, folks. A band is like an action movie. And, and, and if you're a really good band, it's like a really good action movie like uh, Sherlock Holmes. You guys remember? It's like there's all kinds of action, but there's good dialogue. It's just, it's just everything. It's got the whole, it's the whole package, as they say from Chicago. Where are you Chicago guys? It's the whole package. Your, your movie as a singer-songwriter is a dialogue movie. It's Merle Streep and, help me, Tom Hanks? Alex. Alex, no, not Alex Baldwin, no. <laughs> That's a bad movie. Um, <laughs> sorry, Alex. No, no, I'm being, no, I'm just trying to say conceptually. It's, it's a movie where there's dialogue. It's not a lot of action. That's your, that's your thing up here. It'd be out of context for you to slide across the stage on your knees as a singer-songwriter unless you're... I don't know. I don't even go there. So materials, tools, and skills. Let me ask you this. Do all your songs sound the same? No, of course not. Lyrically, they're different. Rhythmically, they're different. You may use some different instruments. Well, then my question to you is this. Whether it's a band, and I say this to band, I'll say this tomorrow. Or to a singer song. If your songs don't sound the same, why do they all look the same? Because they do. And here's the problem. Your audience, 15% is content. Here's communication. 15%. Maybe a little higher for a singer-songwriter. But honestly, live, how often can you always hear the lyrics? Particularly for those of you who are dating your audience. You're not married. What I mean by dating is they don't know you. Taylor walks out. Beyonce, these are all the people in town. This, this town is crazy. Beyonce is tonight. Taylor's tomorrow night. Def Leppard. Need to breathe. All, you know, all, all these people are married to their audience. They know the words. They know who they are. So when they come out and start playing, everyone jumps to their feet and starts singing along. You come out and start playing, and they do this. They're just trying to figure out if they like you. Different relationship. Do you understand that? That's something you need to understand. You who want to make a living. 15% of communication with the audience is, con is content. The words. 30% is the passion you bring something with. 55% is what they see with their eyes. If they see the same thing over and over and over again, after three, you've experienced this as an audience, after three or four songs, the songs start sounding the same, don't they? The person on stage is incredulous, like, what are you talking about? This one's about my wife, this one's about how I got in an accident, this one's about this awesome day, this is about, you know, and I'm using the, uh, an open tuning, I'm using this. But you stand in the same place and do the same thing over and over and over, and over again. And after a while, it's, what, it's a Chinese water torture, which is not good unless you're trying to extract information from your audience. <laughs> the last part is, uh, of my method is this. After the house is built, you move in. 
You move in. You bring your personality to it. That's what makes you unique. We're going to talk a lot about that tomorrow, unfortunately, but it's what makes you unique. How do you make you unique? You do two things. You develop themes in your music. You take your songs. Because how many of you are writers again? All of you? Okay. So, so you're writing songs. Now, I, I'm going to get a broad stroke because there's four or five hundred of you here. You're writing songs, and in the back of your mind, you're thinking, radio. I might, as they say in the South, I might could get that one on radio. <laughs> Extraordinary living down here. I might could do that. So we're writing radio songs. So we're writing a song that has, and well, you'll take the songwriting classes, and I'm not opposed to getting songs on radio. Are you kidding? It's a great promotional tool. But let's talk about the structure for uh, songwriting, if you want to get on radio. It's uh, intro, help me out. It, now, this is a broad stroke. Intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. How long should it be? Exactly. When you go on stage, where does the freaking radio? It's nowhere. I don't see one. It's a different animal. Radio is a commercial. Your live show is a movie. The writing for a movie is different than the writing for radio. So you have to rearrange your songs to work for live. Most people don't. They play the songs the way they recorded them, missing out on so many moments. I think the hardest thing in the music industry, and I really believe this, is having a number one song on radio for multiple reasons, or having a hit on the radio. Getting, writing it, getting it to the right people, Getting it to the public, blah, 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 blah. It's like this thing just, see? But live, you're with people. I don't care if there's 10 people or 10,000. You can create moments out of good songs. Because in every song, if they're good, has moments to be waiting to be cracked open. So what, how do we do that? We develop themes, musical themes, and we develop characters. And you are the character. People come to see people, not just hear music. You need to leave space in your songs, in your show, for your personality to come out. But we don't. Oftentimes we're playing songs the way we wrote them, and the song is in control, not the artist. That's why I love, God bless his soul, that's why I love Prince, if you ever watch Prince stuff, even with the band. He'd be like, hold it, on the one. He takes control of the song. Depending on what's happening in the evening. You need to learn that. But you can do it way easier because you don't have a band. You're standing there with your guitar or your piano. We can pull this thing out and go, wait, 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 wait. What's the hurry? What is the freaking hurry? Here's the problem with another mental big mistake for you guys. Okay, you're playing 20 minutes tonight. I'm telling everyone, it. you're playing 20 minutes tonight in front of, I don't care, 1,000 people. The first thing everyone in this room thinks, how many songs can I cram into 20 minutes? That's like going into a restaurant and saying, how much food can I eat in a half an hour? <laughs> no, that's really what it's like. No, you want to pick out those moments, those things in, at the restaurant that are awesome. We're thinking wrong. So, let's, uh, boy, this is such a short session. Oh, by the way, I have email cards on the, um, Aaron, will you come up here? I'm going to bring somebody up on stage now. I'm going to just in a short 28 minutes, try to show you some options. That's all that is. Aaron Kinsey, this is, this is Aaron Kinsey. Give it up for Aaron. I'll be your roadie. I'll be your roadie. Um, so I'm gonna have her play some stuff, and then I'm gonna mess with it. <laughs> uh, this is what rehearsal looks like. I want to give you a mini, and tomorrow I'm going to do this with a band. Um, 
but I'm going to show you a mini version of rehearsal, and I'm trying to throw some ideas to stimulate you, like, I could do that. Oh, I could do that. What, what if I tried that? The problem is so many times in our lives, when we get this idea that we go, oh, yeah, I don't care whether it's shaving, I don't care if it's in my car, I don't care if it's in rehearsal, I get an idea. And then this quick behind it, fear. It'll never work. What if it's goofy? Ah, it's not hip. That's what I say to that. No, those ideas are what make you unique. And you're, you're, you're quenching them. So we're going to do a mini rehearsal here. Um, I've worked, I, 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 I've cheated this time because it's such a short amount of time. I've worked with Erin since she's 12. Um, she's now 17. And uh, now we really haven't spent a lot of time, we, in fact, we've never done this with acoustic guitar. Um, so we, we've done it with a band and that kind of stuff. So we're gonna kind of make this up. I asked her to program a couple loops. Um, and stuff, but we're going to show you the possibilities, just the possibilities of one song uh, that you could do to, to capture and engage your audience. So, here, here's the deal. I want you to start looking at your show from the audience's perspective. Our problem is we look at it from our perspective on stage. And this is what I deal with. I'm going to say this to you aloud because I've had a glass of wine. That's a problem with some of the guys in your band. They think they know more because they're on stage. But it's really looking at it from the audience's perspective. What, what do they want? What do they expect? What do they need? And so here's the deal. As a singer-songwriter, what are our options here? We have, let's see, the song, our voice, our personality, the music. Now let's break down the music even a little bit. We have dynamics, we have arrangement, we have uh, hook, we have melody. What does the audience pay attention to? You want to broaden your audience, understand what, that everyone does not, you, you singer-songwriters, you guys who are like, I'm being facetious here, into Dylan, that was a different, that, no, no, I love Dylan, but it was a different time. And what I mean by that is, words were king. It certainly wasn't his voice. Uh, <laughs> and that's okay. But you want to broaden your audience? I have a saying. Guys like, don't hammer me about this, no emails, please. Guys like guitar riffs. Girls like relationships. On stage. So what we want to do is, if you want to broaden your audience, think about developing things that you've really, you've been lazy with, or you never thought about trying. So with her, I'm going to push her, and I've pushed her and poked her, and I don't mean that weird, um, <laughs> many, many different ways for many years. So give them, a, give, them, give them a song, and then we're going to just kind of do a mini rehearsal with everybody. Aaron Kinsey, hey, listen. We're a kind audience. Aren't you glad it's not you up here? Yeah. yeah. Is the guitar coming through? Yeah. No. We'll give it a second. <laughs> oh, come on, come roof. Oh, it's what I'm talking about. Can we pull that up? Yeah, it's a, it's a button. Move it up. Fader. Help me. Where is she? That's not it. That's my thoughts on Saturday night. Is 
Is this plugged in? Well, listen, while she's doing this, um, for those of you guys, um, I do an email. I try to do it. Amy and I write, um, and we do a blog every Tuesday, if we can. It's becoming every other week. As I get older, it's like every other, other week. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to start a new thing called, uh, I don't even know what it's called, Coffee with Tom, whatever that, because I every week get 10 people saying, hey, I'm in town. Let, I want to go pick your brain, and I'm th I don't have time. I, don't, I need to make a living. So we're going to record that stuff and put that on. Um, so if you want to be on my email list, I'm not going to try and sell you a bunch of stuff. I'm going to try and sell you a bunch of stuff here today. <laughs> no, for your sake. No, for real. Um, um, what was I just saying? Email. Fill out the email list. If you want, after hearing Erin, if you want to be on her email list, uh, turn it over and put a big E on the back. All right? Yes? If this happens in a live show, what, what do you do as an artist? I start talking about selling, you start talking about selling my product. That's what you do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, no, you, this is just life. It's like, no, here's the deal. Don't freak out. Let me just say this. When mistakes happen, don't freak out. Everyone knows a mistake. You start freaking out, they'll start going. How about this? How many times have you ever seen this? Guys up there playing going. And the audience, audiences are ignorant, folks. No, no, they're, they're not stupid, though a few might be. Um, they're, they're ignorant, so they don't understand. They're like, what's going on on the stage? Is there ants down there? What's going on? Because they're not up on stage. They've never been on stage in their entire life. So you just chat your way through it. You pull it up. This is definitely interesting. Um, while, while we're waiting for them again, what's that? That's working. Yep. Is it your cord into your uh, into the thing by any chance, Aaron? Or the better? Okay, listen. While we're doing this, don't be distracted. This is called misdirection. I'll do this now. I was going to do this at the end of the night. I I have. That's a C sharp. That's scary. Um, you have some issues. <laughs> Okay, I have a book, 430-some pages, on performance. This sounds, how many of you went to college? School for music and stuff like that? The reason they didn't teach it to you, it's, it's funny, a friend of mine about a year ago said, you know what's funny about you go to performing arts school and they don't teach you how to perform? <laughs> no, it's, you, let me tell you this, uh, really, this sounds arrogant, but I'm not, it's not intended to be, I know my calling. You know why they don't teach it? I've been at Berkeley, I've been at Belmont, I've been at, what's another B? But Bismarck. Uh, the reason they don't teach it is because they don't know it. That's why they don't teach it. So, this book is $99, I, I, it's in colleges. I know it's expensive, you're like, whoa. This DVD series is $89, three DVDs. I'm selling them both for $99 outside. Let me say this. Some of you are like, well, I can't pay that much for a book. Yet, you will go pay $99 tonight to go see Def Leppard and whatever, which will really help your career, particularly if you're really high. Um, <laughs> this is an investment in your career. Is anyone in this room invested in this and it helped out? Yes. Listen, I'll, I'll make $99 off you. Yes, I will. And I'll have a really good meal tonight, but it's not going to change my life. I get a lot of money a day to work with people. But this... <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait. There you go. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm the important part of this. <laughs> it's outside. My wife's at the table. She's got these, these, uh, this book and the three DVDs, $99.00. Here. But wait, there's more. No, there isn't. Uh, <laughs> all right, Aaron, go for it. Give it up for Aaron.
hoping that you're thinking about me and hoping that you're thinking about me when you're miles and miles away boy you're still right here right here on my mind oh right here on my mind but since i'm home alone i put on your t-shirt your clothes put them on it you're still close to me even when you can't hold me it takes me back i can smell that sweet cologne when i miss you i put on your t-shirt yeah. oh i put on your t-shirt t-shirt out on that town with my high heels black dress hair done up just right and boy, you know I took some time Having fun with all my girls And you're still right here Right here on my mind Oh, but I don't need to cry Cause since I'm home alone I put on your t-shirt Yeah, I've learned that it works When you're gone There's just something about your clothes Put them on it You're still close to me sang. She is sanger, uh, as they say in Nashville. Um, we need some context here because that's one song. It's not American Idol. Could you imagine 10, 12, 15 songs like that? Same thing. It would get a little old. So, uh, let's lay a groove. Some of you need to do this. Listen, you are Oh, I like this. The band. You are the band. Can you say that? You are the band. Uh, yeah, come on. You. Who likes this group? There's nobody in the world. Anyone ever played um, Old Folks Homes? They're 90 years old, and if you have a groove, they'll still tap their feet. There's no one on the planet that does not like a groove. Doesn't have to be like boom, tsh, boom, though, which is cool, but not for 90 year olds. It'd be boom, I'm dead. But <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that we pay attention to, our audience pays attention to, is the groove, the feel. So we're laying down one right here. All right, let's add something else. Oh, yeah. Give me a chord. Give me a little bit of the song. Waiting on that good morning text. Hoping that you're thinking about me. Hoping that you're thinking about me. 
when you're miles and miles away. Boy, you're still right here, right here on my mind. Diamond is. Oh, right here on my mind. Since I'm home alone, I put on your t-shirt. Let's go to, so, my point for some of you, and, and listen, I, what I love about this conference, not that I don't love the other conferences for those of you who are watching, um, is that you, uh, this is my feeling, maybe I'm wrong, but a lot of the conferences I go to, a lot of people want to come and be discovered. They want to be famous, and I'm, I, again, you know, I work with Taylor, Sean Mendez, and whoever, and whoever, and whoever. It's okay. But most of the people who come to this conference love music. And they want to do it. And you, you've kind of get been beaten down sometimes. But there's nothing... Uh, listen, I've been doing this, I'm going to say it now. I can't believe it. Since I was nine. 30 years. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, and I still am learning to this day. And you know this as human beings. When you learn something, it brings you joy. You're like, yeah, I got that. That's cool. It, it brings you life instead of just being beat down. So some of you need to learn. Not everyone in this place needs to do loops. But I tell you this, we got 500 people here. Uh, give me a figure. I don't know. 80, 200, need to do some loops. Because everyone loves this groove. There's no one in the place. Now, would we do this all night long? A groove every night? No, that's a Chinese water torture. No, but what, what we'll do is we'll break it up with something else. Um, take me from the second chorus out, and then, because we're running out of time, I wanted to do a couple things. Um, Let's take me from the second, can you do it or not? Yeah. All right, take me from the second chorus out and then pick up the other thing. Yeah, I've learned that it works when you're gone. There's just something about your clothes. Good morning, you're still close to me. Even when you can't hold me, it takes me back. I can smell that sweet cologne. When I miss you, I put on. Just did it or something. Yeah. Alright, pick it up. Yeah. Go for it.
Would we do this for the whole night? Mm -mm. Ed Sheeran could learn some things. What? What? What can I say? You know what? Um, but we'd get some sing-alongs. We'd do some other things. We, and, and we would do some touching songs. Pick up the guitar. Let's do uh, Leave a Mark. Um, all I'm trying to do is give you ideas to think outside the box. When she picked that up, I already heard it in the audience. You could feel it. What? She's playing electric? A girl? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just being straight with you. She can play. She, she can slang. Now, here's the question. Here's the deal. Audience, if I polled you, who is listening to the lyrics? Who is listening to the groove? Who is drawn in by the melody? Who is drawn in by the guitar? All different. If it was just the words, singer songwriters, just the words, here's your audience, this big. If we had a groove, this big. If we had some music, some cool arrangements, this big. If we had, you see what I'm saying? We're just spreading it out so people can go, oh my gosh, but you got to do the work. Did I mention my book? <laughs> no, seriously, you got you to do the work. But I promise you, this will work. Uh, there's other people that do shows and whatever and whatever. I don't know about them. I don't know where they're at. But this stuff works. And I want you, there's nothing. I was down uh, ha having a taco or two. And I had two people, I told you, I think, come up and poke me in the arm and said, dude, you changed my life. I went, bought this stuff, worked on it, and I'm, I'm now doing it. That's, uh, honestly, I mentioned at the very, very, very beginning, would I rather be over at, what's the name of the stadium? <laughs> Nissan, or would I rather be here? I'd rather be here and have people say that to me next year. If, uh, seriously. So, um, okay, I just want to showcase her. She, I love this woman. Um, play. So here's the opposite. So we just, just imagine, again, context. We've just done... We've grooved. Yeah, go ahead. Give me a little background. There you go. Here's cheating. This is cheating. But this is good. For those of you who are verbally challenged, how many of you hold up your hand? Okay. You lay a little bed down here. And it's not as awkward that if you were naked. This is like talking with clothes on instead of talking with clothes off. So some of you probably look better. Oh, I'll go there. Um, Oh, yeah. All right. Give us a song. Leave a mark. This is uh, Aaron Kinsey. Mama gave me a little push down the hill. First time without any training wheels. On a sunny day after church down at Drag in Park. Got going too fast and it skinned my knee It tore a hole right through my skinny jeans Mama picked me up, said baby that's gonna leave a mark But that's okay A little reminder never hurt anyway And that's okay Just for making the same mistakes Take the bad with the good It makes us who we are And that's gonna leave a mark Oh yeah He was the first love of my life Before I had a clue what love was and I swore he was the one Failed to ride from the start He told me I was his everything Gave me a kiss and a promise a ring but our happy ever after Ended when he broke my heart But that's okay
this world as it keeps turning all the scars and the pain hung along the way they're worth it and that's okay cause a little reminder never hurt anyway and that's okay Keeps us from making the same mistakes. Take the bad with the good. Makes us who we are. Oh, and that's gonna leave him up. And in this world, I'm gonna leave. Thank you so much. Good Aaron Kinsey, come on. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> All right. So uh, we really just got to touch on some stuff. Um, I don't like to use four-letter words, but um, this stuff is real if you, if you use this four-letter word, work. If you work on this, you need to understand it. That's why I'm, I'm listen, I, I, I'm, you know, I go to Canada. How many Canadians here, eh? Yeah. All right. I'm going to be up to CCMA's in the uh, next couple of weeks. But, um, and, and, you know, you guys are like, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and I can be aggressive, but the reason I'm aggressive about trying to sell my stuff is because I want you to succeed. And I've had literally thousands of people that have told, thousands, that have told me it has helped them. Is it 99 US? 90. <laughs> All right, you wench. Uh, no, that's 100,000 Canadian. Uh, it is US, but, um, you messed me up. I was on a roll. Um, it, it'll help you. I'm, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I am, but I'm not. You know, oh, here's the deal. How many of you sell CDs? All right. If you sell, how many do you sell them for? Let's say 10 bucks. Most of you sell them for 15 or 20, but say 10 bucks. If you sell 10 more in your life, because you learned something out of there that you wouldn't have sold, you've broken even. No, you gotta start looking at investment. Some of you go, I can't afford it, but I'm getting, getting a new guitar next week. Dag nabbit. That, that's it, that's it. Then the audiences will really love you and they'll invite you back. Because that shiny new guitar. Um, so, $99.00. 90 cents for uh, 99, whatever it is, $99. See my wife out there. But I have one other thing. Some of you have bought this. I have a DVD series I've spent. I spent 80 grand to re record this stupid thing. No, it's not stupid. Uh, it's called All Roads Lead to the Stage. I've got 17 classes on it. I sell it for $300. But do you guys think the world's getting a little nuts? No, seriously. Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 an old, I'm an old fart, and I think the world's getting a little nuts. Uh, you know, he, the whole thing in Missouri with that girl and the guy, and I mean, who does that stuff? What do we do about that stuff? Do we stop the borders? Do we open the borders? Do we do this? What about the, the person in Vegas that shot 57 people? What do we do with that? Do we kill guns? Do we get more guns? Do we, I have no freaking idea. I get frustrated. Anyone else? Yeah, it's like you see it, and you're on Facebook, and you're like, it just, it just makes you mad. Of course, then you heard about the 22,000 kids that died today, right? No, you didn't. And yesterday? The day before? No, you didn't, because it's not big news. So here's what I'm going to do. For 26 years, I've helped. It's, it's my world. You can t come talk to me later. But when I get to heaven, God willing, God's not going to poke me in the arm and say, that Sean Mendez show. 
It rocked. <laughs> She'll say, did you feed me? Did you clothe me? Did you visit me when I was in prison? If you um, sponsor a child today, I, I, this organization's been around 75 years. This, this is a world-class organization. You sponsor a child for $33 a month, I will give you my DVD series. It's a win-win. It's for you. The kids' lives are changed, and they're so totally changed, guys. Uh, it's an organization called Child Fund, and uh, there's a guy over there right now who's um, living with them just to, to experience it, one of our people in Child Fund. And he showed us a picture yesterday of an eight-year-old who's the head of the house. Eight-year-old. He's got three siblings. Their parents have died from AIDS. And he's, and he's the head of the house, eight years old. You could change your life by sponsoring a child, change your life by getting the DVD series. It's a win-win situation. Talk to my wife. Sign up on the email cards. Come back tomorrow. If you want to be on Aaron's email list, put an E on the back. God bless you. Love you. Oh. If you come up to say hi, I'm bumping. I hurt my hand four years ago, and it's never healed. So we're bumping. <laughs> hey, there you go. First pop. All right, thanks, Tom. Real quick, we have our 20th anniversary party happening right now out these doors. They've been putting up balloons lately, and sitting Woo! in here, and you have no idea. Um, then the open mic reminder: there's several rooms going tonight. It will be here in Legends ABC. And uh, we have folks from Alaska sponsoring a room across the hall. So that'll be going all night as well. So plan on staying yeah. close and having a good time. Hey, the book is downloadable, by the way, for those of you, and it's $20 cheaper. Talk to my wife.